day two of Larry Miliette's prelimi pre uh, preliminary hearing, and right now the sister of Maya Miliette is on the stand. Good afternoon. Welcome to The Four. I'm Heather Myers. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. Mary Chris Droulet testified about problems in the couple's marriage leading up to Maya's disappearance two years ago. Larry Miliette is, of course, accused of Maya's murder. CBS 8's Kelly Hassadal has been inside the courtroom all day and joins us live with what we learned today. Kelly. That's right, and Mary Chris is still on the stand at this hour. She's been testifying now uh, for most of the day, talking about the family history, uh, the fact that there are six kids in the family. They moved here from the Philippines. Uh, she says that Larry and uh, Maya were high school sweethearts who married, who got married very young. Uh, today, she testified about the conversation she had with Maya when Maya told her she was getting a divorce. She said, all she said actually is just, you know, be ready. It's going to be a messy divorce. Um, if she said, if something happens to me, that's going to be Larry. Some of those motorcycles and things. And Mary Chris testified uh, she was scared for her sister. She says she was scared because she knew Larry had a tendency to snap and could hurt her. She says she told Maya to be careful. Mary Chris talked about an incident where they had gone snowboarding. She said Larry hit a parking attendant because he was angry that the man wouldn't let them go up the hill. She said Larry told her he snapped and couldn't remember why he did it. Mary Chris said when her sister told her uh, she planned to divorce Larry, she texted and asked if they could help her out with the money to hire a divorce attorney because Maya told her she didn't have control of the finances. She said she needed to borrow $10,000 for a divorce and asked if she could pawn them her Rolexes and Louis Vuittons, quote, the ones he won't notice as missing. Now, Mary Chris says when she discovered her sister had disappeared, she went to the couple's house, noticed it was unusually messy. The prosecutor asked her about Larry's demeanor. She said he didn't seem concerned. Did he help call the hospitals? No. Uh, did Larry help call the morgues? No. Did he, when you finally decided to call the police, did he say, yes, that's a good idea, let's call the police? No. What was he saying at that time? He was telling me to wait. But Mary Chris did end up calling the police. Now, she also testified she checked the home that day. She didn't notice any large amount of clothing of Maya's missing. She said all of the purses she normally used were also there as well. Uh, at one point, the prosecutor asked her, was uh, Maya suicidal? And Mary Chris said no. Carla and Heather. Kelly, what was her demeanor like on the stand today? And uh, this has been a long day for her. Yeah, and for the most part, she really held it together. But I will say you could definitely feel the sadness uh, in her voice. Now, the only time she really started to tear up was when uh, the prosecutor asked her, when is the last time you saw your sister in person? She said January 3rd. Uh, she started wiping away tears. And then the prosecutor said, uh, have you heard from her since then? And she said no. Kelly has it all two days in a row in court, soaking it all up and giving us a vivid picture. Thank you, Kelly. A lot of San Diegans have been watching this case with interest ever since Maya disappeared. Joining us now to help break down the hearing, which will determine if Maya's husband Larry will stand trial as legal analyst Gretchen Von Helms. Gretchen, thanks again for joining us today. You just heard Mary Chris Droulet on the stand. She said that if Le she she said that her sister Maya told her that if something happened to her, it was her husband. Is that something that's going to stand up in a trial? Uh, no, because they're hearsay rules, which means you can't testify what someone else said unless there are certain exceptions to the hearsay rule, but that probably won't come in. But her feelings about what her sister told her are, are allowed. Yeah. Gretchen, let me ask you this. The judge countless times uh -huh. has paused Larry's legal counsel, Larry's attorney, uh, and at times kind of gotten on her case for the way that she's presented the line of questioning. What's your takeaway in watching the strategy from Larry's defense attorneys? Well, she normally practices family law, which is very different from criminal law. So she might not be used to what types of questions are allowed or what type of evidence is allowed to come in in a preliminary examination.
Gretchen, you've tried many high profile cases. You're very experienced in this. I know it's difficult to be in the position of analyzing another attorney's work, but when you see what's going on in court with a family law attorney representing Larry here, is there a chance that there could be big problems at trial if she continues as counsel? Well, she might want to seek um, the, an experienced lawyer to help her with the trial, but because she speaks his underlying language, that may be why he chose her. So it's up to him. It's what he chooses. What he feels comfortable going forward with, again, if he is held right. over for trial. And, Christian, I really want to stress that point one more time. This is a preliminary hearing. This is certainly not the trial. This is when the judge at the end of this will decide if there is enough evidence to hold him over for trial. But this is still said to be about three weeks long. We're only the second day in at this point. And the prosecution took a lot of time this morning establishing the relationship between the family members, who was who, how well they knew each other. Uh, what, what do you think is going on sort of behind the scenes there, considering that this is not the trial and, and spending that much time kind of going over uh, who met who at what time? Well, she wants to be able to present evidence that this woman wouldn't have gone to the Philippines and not contacted her children, not reached out to her sister. That's why she's building that relationship, because for some people, they might not ever call their family members. And she's trying to show that this woman would have called her sister, that she was that close with her sister, that she spoke to her frequently, that she had a good relationship with her sister. That's why the prosecutor is establishing that relationship, so she can get that evidence in later. Gretchen, we talked about this is a case that does not have a body, so the burden is going to be pretty high. One piece of evidence that was presented today was a letter from Maya to Larry that made very clear that the relationship was over. She, re she expressed frustration, anger at him and herself for the situation they were in. Is that the kind of thing, that kind of statement, given the context of everything, that will help this case move forward and help prosecution if this does make it to trial? Yes. So things like that that show she was dissatisfied, her going to a divorce lawyer, her trying to get divorced, her willing to separate from her husband, her willingness to go to Big Bear, I think it was, and be with her daughter for her daughter's birthday party. Those are things that she unlikely were to have missed, and that's what the prosecution is doing. They're trying to establish that she was a very committed woman to her family, to her children, and that she thought long and hard about having to divorce her childhood sweetheart. Gretchen Von Helms, thank you so much for your insight in this. We'll be talking to you much more as this case moves along from preliminary hearing to eventually trial, as we believe is what's going to happen here. We'll see you soon. All right, Gretchen, thanks. And thank please stay with CBS 8 for the very latest on this preliminary hearing. Our Kirsten Holmes will be reporting live from the courthouse, new for you at 5, and we'll have details of that letter Maya wrote to her husband about their marriage.